Hey folks, welcome to another edition of The Slice. This is your host, Bill Peters, and we're here doing our second episode of the abduction series, the testimony series, if you will. And this is uh, number two. Number one, we talked to JB, who had uh, very interesting experiences. And tonight we're with Clarence Mitchell, who also happens to be the most magnanimous host of the show on blogtalkradio.com, the name of which is Closer Encounters. Hello, Clarence, and welcome to The Slice. Thanks for uh, showing up and uh, sharing with us tonight. Oh, hello, Bill, and thank you for having me on. <laughs> Always a pleasure. So, yeah, so, as I said a second ago, um, in the last show, we were talking to JB about his experiences, and his experiences ranged from around 67, right straight through to the 80s, almost, you know, pretty much, and uh, I believe it's ongoing. So, um, why don't you let us know when when your experiences started, and your story and background on what happened with you. Sure. Uh, my, uh, my experience also started right around 1967. Uh, I was about uh, six years old at the time, or pretty close to it. Um, it would have been probably in the late uh, summer of that particular year. Uh, and uh, we were living in a small three-bedroom farmhouse at that time in a small town called Livonia, uh, which is in upstate New York. And uh, I had a uh, my first uh, UFO encounter uh, in the middle of the night there. At, uh, well, I basically, I was sleeping there, and I woke up. And uh, my room, uh, which was upstairs next to my mom and dad's room there, uh, I, I had like a small landing aloft uh, that the bed fit in, you know, whatever, right next to the window. And uh, when I woke up, the uh, the room was kind of glowish, reddish colored. Uh, and I didn't know what that was. And I got up and was looking out the window when I spotted this uh, red orb. Uh, uh, it was... I can't really describe how big it was, you know, being young and whatever, uh, but it, it appeared to be pretty good size. It was probably, I'm going to say, roughly a half a mile to a mile away at the, at the time that I saw it. But it would uh, come across the sky in a very slow movement uh, and not wavering at all, but it would just come across the sky right out to the back of the house, so to speak, and then it, it would stop, and it would just float right on back, you know, just as slow as it came across, all the way back to where I first spotted it. Hmm. And it did that, I don't know, two, three, four times maybe. And uh, uh, in the meantime, uh, my mother, who was also, you know, asleep, uh, had gotten up and um, was standing behind me looking out, you know, the same window. And uh, just as it had come across about the halfway mark, it had stopped. And and it had slowly touched down out back in the cornfield there. We had that surrounded the house. And uh, she, uh, she actually startled me. She says, what on earth is that? You know, because I turned around and, you know, here she is standing there looking out the window. And I'm like, I have no idea, you know. <laughs> uh, so we, we just kind of sat there for a minute, you know, and that, and I don't know, I'm not sure, maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes uh, went by, and uh, the craft rose back up, and when it got to the point where it was, when it went down, it just took off and just disappeared. It was like a flash. I've huh. never seen nothing like it in my life. Right. Uh, very, very, very strange. Hmm. Um. My father at the time was working a swing shift. He worked from 3 o'clock in the afternoon until 11 o'clock at night. And uh, he hadn't come home yet. So I know it had to be, uh, you know, probably between 9 and 10, somewhere around there when this incident actually happened. 
and, and uh, we waited up for him to come home because you know, neither one of us wanted to go back to sleep at that time, you know, uh, pretty well scared <coughs> you know what was going on. And uh, he told my mom that the county fair was going on, which was across the way you know, uh, on the other side of town. And uh, it's likely a helicopter uh, giving rides, you know. Well, I didn't think much about it then being, you know, six years old. But I, I took it as, as what it was and, you know, went on to bed. But, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, helicopter rides at night, you know, it just don't make sense, you know. Of course, why would they land out in the cornfield, you know. But anyway, come to find out, the, uh, it was probably a good week, maybe a little bit later, uh, the farmer uh, stopped into the house. And I just happened to be there. There and he was talking to my mom about the cornfield and how he had went out and was doing some combining and came across an area where it had been all mashed down out there and wanted to know if uh, we had seen any people or whoever, you know, out there monkeying around. And uh, <clears throat> mom explained, you know, and uh, he just kind of shook his head and like, what in the hell would that be, you know? And dad told him about the helicopter, you know, and whatever. And of course, he probably, you know, most likely agreed with him or whatever. And that was the end of it. So whatever it was, I still don't know to this day, you know. Early crop um, circles, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or just taking samples or doing something. I, I have no idea. Yep. Uh, but... Uh, I often wondered uh, if maybe uh, I wasn't being marked at that time as a kid or something, you know, or the family or whatever, or I don't know, uh, because it was later on in 1974, I believe it was, uh, we had moved down to Florida a few years prior and uh, was living in a, in a house there in Auburndale, Florida. <clears throat> and uh, myself and my sister uh, had gone across the street and uh, was playing kickball with a young girl that lived there. And my dad and them had gone out grocery shopping, and my brother was out with his buddies riding a bicycle or whatever. And so we went over and was playing uh, with this little girl. And uh, I just happened to look up and right across the road the road kind of comes to a, a v and uh her house would have been in the center with the two roads forking off and, and uh right across the road is a big oak tree and uh you know with houses on either side of it and stuff and i just happened to look up above this oak tree and there's this big silver disc shaped craft just sitting there uh right above this tree and it just totally freaked me out. I had no idea what I was looking at at the time. And uh, <clears throat> I turned around and I hollered at my sister, you know, look at that, you know. And she turned around and as we went to look at it, it had disappeared. With no sound, no light, just boom, gone, you know, just like that. And uh, I was pretty, you know, pretty freaked out by it and uh we went back over to our house and waited for mom and dad to come home and uh in the meantime my brother he come running into the house he was scared to death and uh he said that as he was riding his bike that some lady had uh let out some horrible scream which scared him half to death so he couldn't straight home he didn't know what was going on so <clears throat> i don't know if she's seen that craft like I did and, you know, it, it scared her or what that, that was all about, I'm just kind of putting the two together. But anyway, um, mom and dad had come home and uh, I'm all excited and I'm, you know, flustered and I'm trying to know what happened. And uh, my mom uh, was always a believer after our incident, you know, way back in the 60s. Right. Uh, so I had sat down and I drew a picture picture craft and uh uh what i drew was you know it was a, a regular uh dish shaped craft 
<clears throat> it was along the top side of it had a whole bunch of blacked out windows, uh, a lot like limousine type, you know, black windows. Yep. And uh, it was just eerie, you know. It was kind of like I knew they were watching me, you know, or whatever. Like they were just sitting there looking at me. Right. Uh, to this day, uh, now that I think about it, as I'm older and stuff and done a lot of investigative work and whatever, I often wondered uh, if at the moment that I had turned my head uh, to yell at my sister, uh, if they didn't cloak themselves or something, and, oh. you know, when I look back, you know, they weren't there. They were invisible. Possible. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, but anyway... Later on that evening, of course, we had all gone to bed, and uh, I finally fell asleep after, uh, you know, a good amount of time because I still had this going on in my mind. And uh, <laughs> I woke up, and I'm saying it had to be probably 1, 2 o'clock in the morning uh, because my father and them would always stay up and watch the 11 o'clock news, so I knew it had to be after that. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, and it wasn't daylight out, so it had to be before dawn, you know. Uh, but anyway, I woke up, and uh, my bedroom light was on, and I noticed uh, like three, like, you know, like that waistline. Three lights, you said? And uh, at the same time, yeah, I was... Bunk bed. My brother laid on the top bunk. I was on the bottom. Um, <clears throat> so, of course, we're uh, it's just you know like waistline in view of me, and uh, I tried to scream uh, and tried to holler, and I couldn't talk, uh, and I didn't know what to think. And of course, by that time they were had, had bent down the you know uh, land there telepathically. Uh, uh, down, everything would be okay, you know. <clears throat> Seconds, it was like the calmest I've ever been in my own entire life. It, like, uh, you know, weight being lifted off from you, and, uh, it, you know, really good feeling. And uh, they told me that uh, they'd been watching me, uh, and that they had some things they wanted to give to me, and that I needed to go with them for, you know, a short period of time. But not to worry that everything was going to be okay. You know, I, I would be fine. Uh, wouldn't be any harm or anything like that. Uh, what was really strange about it was the fact that uh, for some reason I knew, and I don't know how, but we, or I, uh, wasn't going to walk out the front door. That For whatever reason, we were going to go out through the bedroom window. And uh, <clears throat> I made the comment to him, look, don't wake my brother up and don't break my glass showcase that I got underneath that window because dad would be really upset, you know, and I don't want to get in any trouble. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> after that, next thing I know, I'm waking up and I'm laying in my bed and it's uh, the next day. And, uh, you know, I don't remember uh, from that point on, you know, what happened uh, during that time span. I have no clue. Huh. Uh but, uh, yeah, it uh, definitely changed my life. And, uh, you know, a whole lot of things that happened since then, uh, which I kind of put with that, you know. Uh, but uh, as far as spiritual changing and uh, mental changing and stuff like that, you know, I've had a big, uh, a big change in life over it. Well, I bet. <laughs> you know. I'm now almost 56 years old, and I've lived with it ever since. So, you know, mm. it's, a, it's quite an ordeal. But uh, some things you can't sh uh, shake. Or... Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I've, I've 
I didn't do a whole lot about it. Uh, of course, back then, you know, you were talking 1974. Uh, I was just around 13 years old at the time. And, uh, I mean, there was probably a few sci-fi type movies out and stuff like that. But, you know, you're not really thinking about aliens and UFOs. I mean, not me anyway, you know, yeah. as a kid, you know. I was. Yeah, you know. Uh, and it wasn't until after all that that I really started looking into it a little bit. But I kept most of that stuff to myself. I never said much or if anything to anybody about it. Yeah. Uh, because I just figured that nobody would believe you anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and it wasn't until uh, long after I had graduated high school and uh, I had joined the military and gotten out, had gotten married, had a couple of kids. Uh, and I was sitting at home, I'm back upstate New York by this time, and uh, living on the old farm homestead that we had. And uh, I decided to be watching one of these programs. Now, this had to be right around 1987, uh, give or take, 88 maybe, uh, somewhere right around that area, maybe even 85. Uh, but anyway... Uh, I was watching a program, I think it was in search of, or one of those uh, deals, and uh, it had uh, it had to do with like what you're doing with alien inductions and stuff, and I'm thinking, yeah, okay, uh, i got to check this out, you know, see what, what this is all about. And uh, on, uh, they had this particular guy on, they were doing an interview with, and his story, Bill, as far as the grades and stuff and the whole deal that he went through, right. was identical, 100% identical to my ordeal. Wow. And that's when I knew that very moment, right then and there, that my whole thing was 100% legit, you know, was real. That was my confirmation moment. Right. Well, you were questioning your own sanity up to that point, or? Oh, absolutely. You yeah. Know, your whole life, you know. Right, right. But then after that, you get to thinking about things, uh, you know, from the past that has happened to you or things that you uh, have no explanation for. And, you know, uh, things like uh, I had many abilities that I could do uh, without any kind of knowledge, you know. Right. Uh, That's helpful. From mechanics. Yeah, you know, from mechanics to drawing, uh, you know, um, and what I mean by that is I could walk into a set of woods someplace and could have wild animals literally walk right up to me, sniff me, and walk away, and they have no fear of me whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I, of them, you know, uh, all kind of crazy stuff, you know, like that, just weird things. And... I thought it would end uh, as I got older and stuff like that, but I also had, uh, well, later on in the 90s, I became a truck driver, an over-the-road truck driver, and I had uh, one big episode of uh, lost time driving cross-country, and, uh, you know, it's things like that that uh, you always revert back to, you know, that particular time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and you know, yeah, you know that it has something to do with this, you know, and uh, it wasn't until just a few years ago when I actually uh, 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 got into the groups and stuff, you know, and uh, started out a little bitty group that I started out, you know, when I got on Facebook and stuff like that, and then I joined the Alien group and. Uh, you know, started watching that program a lot and different things, and then uh, started my own radio show, you know, and things like that. So uh, that's what I'm doing now. But uh, uh, I've always been in search of and always been investigative uh, type thing, you know, and anything about aliens, spaceships, uh, UFOs, uh, space, whatever. Uh, you know, so <laughs> uh, that's what I do. Hell, yeah. yeah. That's, I guess that's what we both do. Yeah. yeah um, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I've been...
late as of the last couple of years myself i've been enamored with the giants um i did start with von daniken's uh chariots of the gods in 1974 or five um after my mother told me about her sighting as a child um with a blue light landing in a field and i immediately went out looking for blue lights and you know it was uh kind of interesting but i don't remember i do remember having way higher than normal mechanical aptitude um the, I thought the military was going to have a conniption when I took their test. Uh, it was, it was, it was funny. And if my eyes had been better, I would have got right in. I could have chose what I wanted to do, no problem. Wow. Yeah, but it didn't happen, so whatever. Here I am. Right. And so, I guess, uh, what is the closest memory that you have of um, any? Uh, contact up close with uh, these abductees. Well, that would have been abductors. Yeah, yeah, that that particular night uh, back in 1974 was the closest I've ever been to them personally. Yeah. Uh, but um, there's been times, uh, and of course I talk about this stuff on my show and that a lot too. But there's been times when I'll be out in the middle of nowhere by myself. And somebody will call my name just as loud as, uh, huh. you know, it's like we're talking right now. I've heard that and too. After a while, it got to be the point where I'm like, I would turn around and answer. Yeah, where, where are you? I'm here. You know, I'm looking, you know, because it just got to be that crazy, you know. Yeah. Uh, very strange huh. things like that happen off and on, you know. Uh, and I just can't explain it, but that to me, I, I kind of put it all in the same box. You know, it all has something to do with that. Uh, whether it does or not, I'm not sure. But you know, some very strange activity has happened to me. You know, over the years. But uh, hmm. I've uh, even gone to the point of renouncing Christianity. You know, my father was a ordained minister for many, many years. I've been yeah. through like three or four different uh, religious faiths. Uh, and it wasn't until one day I actually sat down, I opened the Bible up, started reading it, and it popped out at me like it was, uh, alien scripture, you know, like they were talking about teas and stuff. And I'm like, wow. And it was just like, you know, all of a sudden everything just started making sense, you know, as I read it in that form, you know, and, and, uh, I would talk to other pastors about it and stuff, and they were just like, you need to get out of here. Leave me alone. This this is nonsense or whatever. And, and, but, yeah, I wound up uh, leaving the churches and, uh, you know, renouncing Christianity altogether and stuff. Not that I'm an atheist. Uh, All right. By any means. But, but uh, I, I just can't uh, do the religion anymore, you know, because of this. So... It definitely changes you, yeah, for me. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, um, well, everybody knows what I think because I say it a hundred times, but, um, yeah, I kind of think that the universe makes up the, the consciousness of the being that is we're inside of. We're like a parasite anyway. Um we're probably just like a tick. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but exactly. <laughs> <Yeah. coughs> Pretty crazy. I want to, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested in, uh, what colored lights were the, on the shit, on the, whatever it was. Right. Oh, I also have another question actually. Um, when you hear your name called, because I've had this happen myself, I've always had the impression that it was another dimension rather than, well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, the first one, the one, yeah, go ahead. Right, right. Whether it was past or future, uh, that I, 
I don't know. Come on, my name's Claire. Yeah, uh, just totally, totally blows you away, you know. And when you hear it, you know it because it was just as loud as uh, yeah. I said, talk, talking to your face to face. And uh, there's no sound, so yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of things I could go on and on and on about things that's happened to me over the years, uh, and I and I place it all in the same uh, realm, you know, in the same category uh, for whatever. Uh, I don't know. The Paranormal, reason. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I and I don't know the reason uh, why it happened to me, whether I was chosen or if it was just a random act, and I just happened to be one. You know, uh, anything's possible this day and age. I mean, you know, I'm saying, um, and as much investigative work that people have done over the years on this particular subject, I don't think they'll ever come up with a tour, you know, as far as that. Uh, I mean, we've teased over our lifetime, you know, like with Travis Walton, Arnie Hill, uh, the list goes on and on, and uh, a lot of the stories are pretty much the same. They all happen pretty much the same way. Most of the entities are the same, you know. So, how can you debunk something like that? <laughs> you know, I, you know, you yeah, I, uh, yeah. There's more evidence for it than against it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And when uh, you get uh, when you get children from a school like down in Zimbabwe. Uh, you got 20, 30, 40 kids at one time all witnessing the same craft coming down uh, with extraterrestrials standing around it. They all drew the same craft. They all drew the same alien, uh, told about their psychic uh, uh, apparition that they had going on, you know, the, the speaking about uh, the earth, you know, and how they need to clean it up and, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, you can't. You cannot uh, tell me that that didn't happen, you know. It just, <laughs> yeah, crazy stuff. It will be even crazier than it being true is if they found out somehow that they could transmit the same experience to all the kids at once with yeah. with yeah. with uh, harp, you know. You could, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it was Jesse Ventura on one of his shows. He... Uh, was asking questions about that and they the guy he went to a specialist and the scientist said yeah he says you could easily project thoughts into people's heads with that array you could even pinpoint where you want it wow. i'm like holy shit <laughs> <laughs> that would be something Ooh, that'd be dangerous if somebody have that power True. i mean this is god 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 <laughs> Yeah, that would be kind of a scary deal. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of scared because I know they could probably do it. Most likely, yeah. I don't know if they ever would or not, but you know, I would I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, I bet you they did it to try it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. And when they did it, it probably backfired, and that's why we got global warming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Surprise me. <laughs> Some people believe they're heating up the ionosphere with that thing, and it um, creates weather changes. Really? Yeah, that's what I was told by one guy one time. Uh, I don't know if I go that far. With yeah, that. I don't know. You know, I, I hear a lot of conspiracies out there over different things and stuff, and I'll yeah. be honest with you, a lot of them I just kind of let fly by, you know. Uh, yeah, you got to. Yeah, there's just so much out there anymore. Um. I'll address it only to disprove it or debunk it or something, you know. Um, it gives me a show. Um, I always try to get, you know, people to give me their ideas about shows. And that includes if they want to, if say there's a flat, you believe in flat earth and you want to debate a round earther and, you know, you got to bring somebody on. Well, go ahead. Right. I'll yeah. keep a scorecard and see who wins. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's why I do the radio show, you know. I yeah. always, uh, always invite people in. I, I like their uh, 
their opinions. I like their enthusiasm, yep. you know, yep. and stuff like that. Uh, I like to see where they're coming from and, you know, get their ideas and whatever and, uh, you know, have a good powwow with that. Um, and that goes for the slice, too, you guys. If you um, if you have an idea about something you want to talk about, do get a hold of me. If you you know, if you got a lot of information, you want to share it. Hey, I'm sure there's something that we some of us have never heard and and uh, at least put it out there for debate, um, which is kind of the whole point. Yep. Yeah. Exactly right. And it shows like clearances and stuff that I do and so many others as well that uh, we all keep that information alive and there's a it will be a dead information if we didn't have these venues so that's kind of my true. my latest battle cry because they would love to take the power away from us yes you they're know? working on it i know i know <laughs> yeah they're definitely working. that's kind of why i said that because i just want people to be aware that <laughs> this kind of stuff can disappear yes very well so, could yeah. sad you won't see many of these in China, not without state sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. But you know, Bill, honestly, what's really happening now, and and I hope a lot of these uh, people realize that there is so much uh, new discoveries happening right now. Every day, every day. Every day. And the ones that are actually getting out uh, and you know, bringing it forth and stuff like that. Um, God bless them, you know what I mean? Um, Takes time and money, time and money. And the thing is right now, it's it's getting to the point where they need to start changing the history books. And uh, Yeah, they're a little behind. Mainstream archaeologists and scientists are having a field day right now. They are backed into a corner, and they don't know what's going to happen, uh, you know. <laughs> They have to change with the times, right? They have to, absolutely. Yeah. So it's going to happen. It's yeah. going to happen. And I don't know how soon, but it won't be long in coming. They've just uh, about lost a handle on the Giants because uh, they're getting out pretty good now. Yes, they are, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And every time they want to debunk something, and I think a lot of it, too, is because of the younger generation now, which, hey, you know, oh. There is too many fakes out there, too, though. Yes. And that doesn't help our cause at all. It's the real stuff that we want to be centered on. I try to be real critical of that stuff because I've had people take that one. You know that one where they get the skull in the in the cart? Yes. And they push. That is the biggest fake ever. And I've had people literally get right in my face to argue that. Wow. I'm like, what? <laughs> Have you looked at the picture? I mean, look at it. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you can just look at it and know that's not even... I even found the picture it was taken from, and they still didn't want to believe it. I'm like, wow, that's pretty good. Well, you know, that's and that's the thing with some people, too, and it's, and it's kind of ironic. I, I get that a lot, too, on my show, where they are just so uh, wrapped up into this one particular deal that there is nothing that's going to ever stop them from believing what yeah. they believe. And that's, and that's, you know, what do you do with that? You, know? you let them believe what they want to believe, you know. And, exactly. yeah. and someday, someday they'll find out that it was bull and, uh, you know, they'll have to deal with it then. But, you know. You know, half the time I think they do that just to, just to have something to be different about. Sometimes I believe you're right. Yes. yes absolutely. Absolutely. And then you got these guys that go out there every single day. They wake up in the morning, and the first thing on their mind is, what can I do today uh, to make fake, to uh, blow people's mind? You know what I'm saying? And get they hits. They just CGI everything. You know? Yeah, it's all about making money on the Internet. Um, yeah. 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 Go ahead. You watch their videos. They're all fake, and they're freaking getting millions of hits. And yeah, and that's that's great for them because it goes right in their pocket. Yeah. Yeah. But the rest of us, we got to try to explain it away, like, hey, yo. Oh. Yeah, but even a lot of that though is going to come to an end here pretty soon because a lot of these uh, money uh, people, these advertisers and stuff, they're going to get, you know, well, I think they're already getting wise to it, and uh, you know, they're just wasting their money, so to speak, and I think they're going to start putting an end to it. You know? Well, that's up to them. As long as they're buying advertising space and YouTube 
cuts the checks, people will do it. Well, that's true too, but yeah. Well, we can always hope anyway. <laughs> I don't well, know. I, I, I want, I want a lot of hits and, and yeah, it costs money to get this equipment. Mm -hmm. If I got enough hits, I could buy some really good equipment. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But, I agree. um, I'm going to redo my Giants of the Panamints because, um, that was one of my best videos, uh, 120,000 hits on that. Um, yeah, it's the only one too, uh, that hit, got that many anyway. I got some, I got a few thousand, but, but in, in the raw, every hit's appreciated, but that one there, you know what the big discussion was? The Confederate flag and the, they had hanging there when I was doing my political, uh, I did a show. I, yeah, I did a show and I left the flag up there for my next show. I wasn't going to do it. I mean, I didn't even think about it, you know, and it wasn't a big deal. It's been up there for two years. All of a sudden, boom, 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 I start getting hit. So I'm like, what's going on? They're all bitching about the flag. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, what a bunch of pathetic people concentrating on the flag when there's good information on that damn thing right so i'm gonna re-release that one um without the flag, without the flag yeah. yeah and it's good information and people ought to at least see an updated version exactly yeah and, um, wow. anyway yeah that's fun i can't get over that it made me laugh <laughs> so you gotta be kidding that's funny yeah, yeah. But I do have more information to add to the, that particular subject, so um, there has been an update, so that's cool. cool. But anyway, um, I know we got off track here of our abduction uh, thing. Uh, was it, Were you the only one in your family that uh, had that experience, or was there others? Uh, as far as aliens and UFOs and stuff, pretty much I'm the only one, other than my mom with her sighting with me. Right. Um, but my sister, uh, back in the sixties, uh, when we lived in that other house where I had my first sighting, mm -hmm. did have a paranormal experience with a, a deceased grandparent hmm. that died before I was born. Ah. Uh, and being, she was younger than me, obviously she never met him and neither did I. And she had no idea who he was or what he looked like. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, uh, in that same house. Uh, my mother and I was woke up in the middle of the night hearing somebody talking huh. and, uh, we kind of crept downstairs to see what was going on. And here my sister is sitting up in bed talking, uh, huh. however. Yeah. and my mom's like, uh, Yvonne, uh, what are you doing? She goes, well, I'm talking to grandpa. She goes, what grandpa? She goes, grandpa Mitchell. And she says, grandpa Mitchell. She goes, yeah. And, uh, well, what did he look like? She described him right to a T. Never met him, yeah. Never met him. Never met him. Never I've, seen a picture of him. Had no idea who he was or what he looked like. You know, it's funny. I, I, I talked to somebody else that said a very similar experience. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's interesting. I wonder how often that happens. Well, it's funny, you know, because I guess he told her to be a good girl and mind her mama and her daddy. Nice. And, uh, you know, he, he would uh, always be around, and uh, that was it. <laughs> that is cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, so I don't know if my family has a thing about the paranormal one way or the other. Oh, know, I have a theory. I have a theory. Um, it has to do with the electromagnetic uh, strength of, like, your aura. Mm -hmm. Um some people, and if I concentrate, I can do it, but can sense the aura around someone, usually with colors. Um, it's uh, that each color means something different to whoever it is that's experiencing that. Mm -hmm. But I, I have a feeling that what those people do is they pick up on the electromagnetic field and just decode it into whatever what method that their mind can handle. Um, oh, see, I'm an empath. I'm, I'm uh, yep. pathetic. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, 
I can spot a person a mile away and know if that person is going to be a good person, a bad person, an angry person, uh, you know, or just to stay away from him or, you know, yep. I mean? yep. uh, it's very, very strange that I do that. And it's the same thing with animals. You know, like I said, I have this thing about animals. Mm. Uh, you could take two fighting pit bulls. <laughs> I can actually walk in between them and they both would wind up licking my hands. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Mm. It's very, very strange how that happens. And it's just the way it is with me. So, you know, there may be something about that, you know. Hmm. Very, very... I have similar experience. I've never been bit by a dog. No. Uh, even the ones that start out growling, they turn, they change their minds. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so it's very possible, Bill, that, you know, uh, what you're saying, that it's just about the aura and stuff like that. Perhaps that's it, yeah. Uh, um, I... Mosquitoes like the aura. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, certain people, uh, you know, they either like me or they don't like me. You know what I'm saying? Right, right now, sure. Which is really funny how that works, too. And I didn't mention this, but growing up as a kid in school, I used to get beat up a lot just for no reason at all. Yeah, me too. You know, uh, very very weird uh thing that happened there but i finally outgrew that thank god uh you know whatever but uh yeah i took a lot of punches as a kid uh for whatever reason you know just because i was different but right. i don't know how different i am you know uh you were that was. Was they sensed it or whatever i don't know but, you weren't uh, cool enough <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but I had a lot of good friends, too. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, me too. There's just uh, them certain ones that, for whatever reason. Yep. But life went on, and, you know, I just kind of took it as a lesson learned, and, uh, you know, that's how it is. Not much you can do there. That's it. Life is yep. life, you know. Yep. But, uh, but here I am. <laughs> yes. Well, you're not alone out there, Clarence. Uh, a lot of us... Uh, Similar roads, yes. not always pleasant, but you know, there we go. We're human. Yep. Well, maybe we're not. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah. You know, Ancestry.com to come back. Oh yeah, you're from Sirius B. Uh, sorry, you don't belong here. Exactly. Because it's yeah. just the end of the first epic. Well, it's four yeah. epics, and then it starts over. Now we're back in Aquarius, so you know. Exactly. Yeah. Or their their version of something else, but yeah. Yeah. Well, we come out of the Aquarius age or something, and you know. We just uh, started it. Or just started it. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah. That's the new millennium for you. We were in Scorpio before that. It may have been something yeah. like that. That's, that's another thing. I'm not real heavy into the zodiac stuff either. You know. Well, it's I am, I am a Sagittarius, and I understand that uh, we're a pretty crazy bunch. So, <laughs> I don't know yeah, well, it has a significance or not. But. The zodiac actually tells us where we are in the galaxy. Okay. Because depending on the age is, is dependent upon what constellations we can view. Uh, right. And that is related to where we are in the galactic year, which is, what is that, 360,000 years or some such a godly amount. Okay. Yeah. But we just finished a full revolution, dude. And since mankind's been around. Right. Um, but it's not a full revolution. I mean, we weren't keeping track that we know of. Of course, I know that you agree with me that we've probably had high tech here many times before. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I think yeah. it gets wiped out pretty easy because it's very small areas that have it. But um, I think there's been a few colonies here. <laughs> Earth has been changed three or four different times at least. At least that. Five glaciers, uh, yeah. two, of, two of which completely encircled the Earth. I believe that, sure. The other three didn't. They re came down a certain amount and then retracted. But, right. um, yeah, the last one was a partial. 
Um, but when those things we're still in, actually, we're we're just now coming out of the end of it. You know, it's just, yeah, that's right. We're still coming out of it. Yeah, people think it's global warming. Well, yeah, it is, but not because of what you think. Yeah, I mean, when you watch Antarctica, you know, and and it's all them glaciers are falling apart and all that stuff. Yeah, it's just the end of the ice age. That's not nothing big, as far as I'm concerned. No, know? no. <laughs> you know, you know. Supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah, they only care because it's uh, it, they built their stupid cities too close to it, and ahead. yeah, now they got to pay the price. You know. Yeah. Well. <laughs> That's their stupidity. Don't blame it on me. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I mean that's you know we're still in the end of the ice age. It has never ended yet. That's you know, right. That is correct. I agree a hundred percent. It's it's funny. It's like people building um, villages at the base of a volcano. <laughs> um, hello. What the hell is that? Yeah, the grass grows really green there. Yes. <laughs> that's why they 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 can grow good crops. That's why they're there. <laughs> well, you know what? I'd rather not get buried by lava. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't want my house shaken off its foundation. I don't want. That's why I live in the north. You know, yeah. northeast. Yeah. Not it's, much happens up there. Really. Nothing. Not the animals don't want to kill you. Exactly. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. You go down yeah. south, everything's trying to kill you. Jesus. Yeah. The weather, the animals, everything. Yeah. Woo. Almost. Even here in Minnesota, you know, I mean, you would think there'd be much here, you know. Yeah. Man, 50 below zero, you know, 60 below zero weather, you know. Not e not even the wolverines come out. But, exactly. You know. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Crazy stuff. But, there are plenty of wolverines up there. I saw some when I was up in uh, uh, the Upper Peninsula. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't too aggressive with me, but... They weren't in a position where they had to be either. True. So that helped. <laughs> yeah. It's a tough life up that way. Um, if you don't have a, well, if you don't work at the prison, you're not making any money in that area. Right. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. And the prison's full of people up there. Well, I'm pretty fortunate. I work in a mine up here, and uh, you know, I work for U.S. Steel and stuff. And oh, yep. You know, uh, so I, I make pretty good money here. If it wasn't for the job, I I don't think I'd be here much longer. Yeah. You know, it's funny. They find that Michigan copper everywhere in the world. Right. Uh, there had to be. you got to be right in giant country. Uh, well, you know, it's funny. The uh, Oh, I can't think what his name is now. He was doing the, the uh, America Unearthed programs. Uh, Scott... Um, Oh, Scott. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Uh, Not Scott Folsom, was it? Yeah, he lives here in Minnesota. Okay. And uh, he was one of the guys uh, that, you know, had said about the Giants being in this area and stuff like that and, you know, different things too. So. Well, they were trading with the Egyptians. We know that much. Well, that's what they say. I mean, that's yeah. a good indication, yeah. That's, uh, that's pretty good proof if you... Look at the tablets they found, and um, they found artifacts. Yeah. Uh, of course, they say there's that place down in the Grand Canyon too that's full of Egyptian uh, stuff. That uh, well, is there. nobody can get to it. But yeah, yeah, well, I can. You know why? Ah, drone. <laughs> no. No. I am a direct descendant of John Wesley Powell. No uh, kidding. And uh, yes. And everybody hates him, but I have his. I've read his journal. Cool. And I know where the second entry is to that cave system, and it's not where everybody's looking. <laughs> That's awesome. Think about it, Clarence. If you're going to put a complex in the ground, you're not going to have just one entrance. That's a. It's a death sentence. You can't get the air down there. You can't do a lot of things. So, so. Um, as soon as I read the journal, I realized that's exactly why it was built the way it was. Wow. Um, one entryway was low, one entryway was high, not just because they wanted an escape route, but because it allowed for the airflow. Right. And it, they needed the airflow through those tunnels because if they didn't have it, they would suffocate. So, 
That makes sense. Absolutely. And yeah. the the uh, artifacts that were described to me sounded more like um, Asian. Uh, there's another cave where a, King, a guy named Kincaid found, Kincaid's cave in Marble Canyon. His had a ship in it, from what I understood. And guess what? It's attached to the Hopi salt mines. Really? And that would explain why the ship's in there, because the salt mines are from when there was a sea there. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So as soon as I figured that out, and then I read John's notes again, and I went, that's not the same cave. No. It's the one that Kincaid talks about had Egyptian stuff and and um, even a sarcophagus, if I understand, if I remember correctly. Right. And all this stuff, and everything's in the ship, but the only people that can go look at it are the Hopis because it's connected to their salt mine, and they go in once a year for rituals. Wow. <coughs> That's pretty amazing. Yep. Otherwise, the government will shoot you if you go in there. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so. why do they do that? Why don't they just bring it out and, you know, I don't understand what they're so damn afraid of. I, th you know? I think they'd have to explain a lot of things if they started doing that. Well, so so they got to explain it and they got to rewrite history. Most of the people that are involved are dead, so who cares? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know. John Wesley ain't gonna worry about it. He's buried. Yeah, he's long gone. He he hit he hit a lot of stuff though. He hit a lot of giant evidence. Um, and I wish I'd had a couple more years of his journals just to check on some things. Um, especially the 1881 um, was a big big bunch of um, finds that year. The uh, 1880s were crazy for finds of giants. Sure. And pterosaurs, too, the pterodactyl, little mini pterodactyls. Right. Um, they were shooting them out of the sky out west all over the place. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah, I've seen so many pictures, different ones. And some in family albums. I was like, what? What the hell? This thing in the newspaper, that's a real photograph. Holy shit. So. Uh, you know, and I, and I, I wouldn't, uh, you know. I'd, I'd have to believe that because for many, many years they thought that the chubacabra on that was long gone and the, and the uh, uh, what was that other one, that Tasmanian double? Yeah, they found them again, yeah. They found that one, so, you know. Yep. And they're still pulling ancient fish out of the ocean and different things, so, you know. Yep. <laughs> yeah. the, they, thought the giant, they thought the giant squid was extinct. They found one of them. Found a bunch of them, yeah. A bunch of them, actually. Yeah, right. So they're still doing stuff. There's some them. weird creatures. They they find, like you said earlier, they find new stuff every day, and that goes for new animals. And I mean, Clarence, some of the stuff out in those Asian, the Malaysia area in in the Asia uh, oh, whole okay. area, some of those creatures are scary. Aren't they though? Oh, you know, you know. Here's the thing, though, Bill. I often wonder how many of them are new, and not actually old. You know, what I'm saying. Ooh. How many of them are actually being brought here now, and set out? You know, or whatever. Ooh. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know, because. It just kind of dawned on me one day. I was thinking about that, and I'm like, you know, after all these years of man being on Earth and all this stuff, and now all of a sudden they're finding this stuff, and it's like, uh, I almost think it's being introduced someplace, and we're just, you know, well, we're, we're kind of uh, stumbling across it, you know. But except for a lot of these um, monsters that find them were based they went looking for them because of legends from the villagers oh, that too. Yeah. yeah so i mean what i'm talking about anyway they all oh, the huge fish supposed to be able to eat a man and they're like no and the vill villagers are like oh yeah and then they go and they find this eel that could swallow a canoe you know it's like exactly. really that guy what's that guy's name he goes around and he fishes all them rivers and stuff. oh yeah that's what i'm talking about uh 
Yeah, river monsters, yeah. I'll never go near another damn river as long as I live with that show. Not not overseas, man. Uh, up, oh we go in our rivers. Our rivers are good. Yeah. I mean, we got piranha here. Come what? On. What are you talking about, piranha? Yeah. You didn't know that? I don't have piranha. <laughs> you might not, but down towards we, the south down there. We, got, uh, we got trout. <laughs> well, I know we have trout, too, but... I'm saying there, there's where people had bought in these stupid piranha, like out of the... Oh, uh, water's too cold up here. Yeah, it could be. Well, don't say that because he found them in places that they ain't supposed to exist either because of water. Oh, Christ. I always see a piranha. I'll lose my mind. I'm serious. But red bellies, yeah. They oh. Yeah. It, would, it would wipe out the trout, dude. It would definitely wipe out. So. Yeah. yeah. You would think so. But he he actually did a thing about it, and uh, uh, I hope they, they yeah kill <laughs> kill them all. Yeah, kill Crazy. every fish in that river if you have to. But don't let them spread. Holy shit! No kidding, right? Wow. <laughs> Crazy. So here's here's what I got to say at this point. If you've been abducted, or if you know someone that has or you know something that you want to share i don't care if it's abduction or not we're just all about information here on the slice and uh do tune in to clarence mitchell on blog talk radio with closer encounters and that's blogtalkradio.com closer encounters also clarence is an administrator at the uh, Ancient Alien Theory web's uh, Facebook page, rather. And to get there, you just go facebook.com backslash groups backslash AA Theory, T H E O R Y. And Matthew Bowers is lead administrator over there, a real friendly bunch. And guess what? You get information as well. So there's all kinds of perks to that. And, um, Clarence, thank you so much for uh, stopping by and chatting with us. I hope uh, a lot more people uh, follow your lead because, well, to, well, to be honest, I I could spend uh, fifty hours a week researching for one show, you know. And um, when there's more than one person here, we can pool our minds, if you will. And I, I like that. So, <laughs> me too. Well, I appreciate you having me on, Bill. Thank you very much for the invite. And uh, I hope everybody, uh, you know, checks it all out. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. jump on board, folks. On either of our shows, we'd love to have you. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. All right, Clarence, thank you. And good night from The Slice.